Hello everyone, Pastor Jordan here uh, for a Bible study lesson this week. Now, uh, it's after the new year and we've gone through Christmas and so now we'll be jumping back uh, to our study in the book of Exodus uh, today. So that's where you can uh, jump to in your Bibles. Uh, I look forward to getting back into this, continue walking through that story together. Um, but I hope that you're doing well. I hope your, your Christmas went well and um, even though it's after the holidays, if there's anything you need, please let me know. Be glad to help. Um, but before we begin here, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you again uh, for your word, how it always speaks to us, no matter where we are or what, what time it might be. Uh, no matter what scripture it is, it's always applicable for us. And so, Lord, I pray that as we open our Bibles back to the book of Exodus today, that you would speak to us from these truths. Lord, show us how this applies to us and how we can live for you and love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we continue on looking at the different pieces that are being made um, for the tabernacle. And here, as we pick up in chapter 30, uh, we're told that uh, they are to make an, the altar of incense. And now, um, we can understand, we talked about the priests and their installation, maybe because this wasn't used in the installation of the priests. That's maybe why this is recorded after that. Um, but... Anyway, they're, they're called to make this altar, and it's going to be uh, about a, a foot and a half square uh, all the way around. It's going to be about three feet tall. Um, and they're told that you know, they're going to make it as they did with the others. It's going to be overlaid with pure gold. Um, it's going to have rings on it for the poles to go through, also overlaid with gold. And... Uh, where they're going to put it is, if you remember the uh, the tabernacle itself, on on you have the holy place and the most holy place, or the ho or the holy place and the holy of holies, however you want to call it. Um, this is going to sit right outside of the holy of holies in the holy place, uh, right in front of the veil. Um, and so Aaron is going to to burn incense on it uh, every morning. He's going to do it, um, and he's going to do it in the evenings as well. Um, this is going to be, as he says. In verse number 8 of chapter 30, a regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. Um, this is going to be something they're going to be doing uh, for, for a long time. And um, we find here in, in verse 9 uh, that they are to use a certain kind of incense for it. It says, you shall not offer unauthorized incense on it or a burnt offering, grain offering, or a drink offering on it. It's going to be according to what God has prescribed. And actually, if you were to jump down to um, verse 22, we kind of see what uh, that is going to entail. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It says in, in verse 34, uh, actually, if you jump down even further, it says they have to take sweet spices, uh, stack tea, anica, and galbanum, you know, sweet spices with frankincense, um, and they are to make a special type of incense. This is going to be blended by, by a perfumer, somebody that knows what they're doing, so that uh, it's made well, seasoned with salt, pure, and holy. Um, and so this incense itself is going to be most holy for the people, as it says in verse 36. Uh, they, they're going to make it according to what God has said, um, and this is going to be made for this particular purpose, um, just for being offered before the Lord. Uh, they're not to make it for themselves, for them to use on a, for any other thing, but this is going to be strictly for use in the tabernacle uh, for God's worship. Anybody that, that makes it, as it says in verse 38, is going to be cut off from his people. This is for God's use and God's worship only. Now, um, along with this, if you look in, in verse 22, uh, the same concept with something being special is with this anointing oil. Um, in the finest spices, liquid myrrh, uh, sweet-smelling cinnamon, aromatic cane. If you go through this again, this is supposed to be made by a perfumer, somebody that, again, knows what they're doing. This is their craft, and it's going to be made a holy anointing oil to be used um, when they uh, anoint the tent of meeting and the ark, um, the table, all the utensils. Um, all of this is going to be used to consecrate them, as well as Aaron and his sons, uh, this is going to be a special type of oil, again, used for only God's purposes here. And that's very important. This is, it's set apart for a holy use. 
just in God's service uh, for nothing else. If anybody tries to make it themselves, then again, as verse 33 says, they will be cut off from the people. And now this, this altar uh, of incense after it has been made um, is going to be set apart for the holy use uh, of God. And uh, Aaron is to make uh, atonement on its horns um, once a year uh, to, to, to sanctify it, to set it apart uh, just as the other pieces have done. Now, in verses 11 uh, through 16 of chapter 30, uh, we kind of have just a little bit of a break here as God's giving instructions. And um, he, God calls for a census of the people. Uh, we're familiar with the census, as you see in the picture. You know, we had the census back here to count um, everyone. Now, with this, uh, there, there's a tax that goes along with it. Um, and, and the reason for that is if you look in verse 12 with me, uh, that each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when they are numbered. Um, and the idea here is, um, you know, God has, has already delivered them uh, from Egypt. And, but again, kind of going along with uh, all the sacrifice and everything going with the tabernacle, uh, a price needs to be paid for them to be his, uh, be his nation, to be his people. Um, and so in that price, um, that, that silver as they would give it uh, in the census would remind them of the atonement that needs to be paid. And uh, if, if you go through here, um, every, every single person is to give half a shekel. Um, and part, the shekels of all this will go towards the, the tabernacle and the priests and all that to help care for them. Um, but it says, you know, everyone who is numbered in the census from 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. And the understanding here is uh, whether somebody's rich or poor, they all give the same amount. The understanding that everybody across the board uh, needs atonement. No one needs more atonement or less atonement. Everybody needs the same. And we can kind of see that, that truth uh, coming forth um, in God's deliverance of, of us as well with Christ. And another reason why they would do this is also to the 20-year-olds and up to kind of get an idea of an army, uh, the, the men able to fight, um, and so they can count and see um, you know, who, who among them is able to, um, to serve in the army. And they're to do this uh, with the right reasons. Um, God is calling them to do this now, so they're to do it. Um, but these censuses aren't something that they just kind of do on their own uh, to just raise funds. No, uh, they're set aside for, for God's purpose here. It's not as, as we do here in the United States to, uh, to set up how many votes a, a certain state gets uh, or that manner, but uh, really you know, to, to raise money according to what God has said and to number the people. Um, this isn't just something that people did whenever, but only when God prescribed it to, uh, for them to do. Now we jump back um, in verse 17, another thing for the tabernacle, and this is the, uh, the bronze basin, as it's called. Um, some translations uh, say laver, um, but the understanding that uh, this, it's a round basin that holds water. And uh, the purpose of this uh, was for the priests uh, to wash themselves. Now you have an idea of kind of what it looked like here. There's other depictions uh, other than this picture, but, but the idea is it was in this labor, the priests uh, are to wash themselves. Um, it says in verse 19, Aaron and his sons, they wash their hands and their feet. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, when they go into the tent of meeting, they need to be cleansed. Um, you know, sim symbolically here, there's nothing magic in the water, but the understanding that um, one needs to be clean before approaching the Lord. And the priests themselves, even though they have a, a, an office that's been given to them that's set apart, uh, they too still need to be cleansed of their sins. And so uh, they are to go and to, to wash themselves uh, in this basin uh, before they enter into the tent um, to show that they are uh, clean before the Lord. And Everyone after them is to continue to do this for generations to come until we see Christ come and that cleansing is fully fulfilled um, in him. And now as you look at chapter 31, we find that after all these pieces that God has uh, uh, told the people there to make, um, he doesn't just hope they do their best, but he also gives them uh, the names uh, of the men who are to, to make these things. Um, we're told in verse 2, chapter 31, um, that Bezalel, the son of Uri, um, is going to be the one to make these things. And if you look in verse 6, he's also appointed Aholiab, 
the son of Ahishma, Ahis Samak, um, to, to assist him. And if you notice here, um, these men, they, they are expert craftsmen. Uh, he doesn't want just anybody doing the job. These people need to know what they're doing. But, but if you notice here, um, God is the one that's going to enable them to do this. Um, in verse 3, he says you know, he's filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God. He's given him the, the ability, the intelligence, the knowledge, all the craftsmanship to be able to do all these things, to work with gold, with silver, with bronze, to be able to cut the stones, to carve the wood, and to work in, in every part of this. Um, and so he, he, he's given to them uh, the ability, as he says in verse 6, to, to all able men that they will be able to do all of these things. Uh, they'll be able to make, make the tent of meeting, the ark, uh, the, the mercy seat upon it, every bit of this, including the, the garments of the priest, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense. Um, he has given all the people the ability to be able to do this. Not that they can do it on their own, but it's through his gifting um, that they are able to, to put these things together um, for his worship and for his glory. Now, at the very end of this, after he sets apart uh, these men to be able to do that, uh, we are reminded again of the Sabbath at the end of this. Uh, in verse 13, it says, You speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. I mean, all these things have been talking about the worship of God. And if we think about the Sabbath day, that is the day of rest, that's the day of worship that the people are to have. They are to cease from work and, and to rest and to worship Him. It's, and He gives us uh, an, an example here, just as He does in the Ten Commandments, that you know, six days God created the world, and the seventh day He rested uh, to set a, as, a, uh, as a model for us and how we are to go about our week as well. Uh, anyone who ever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be to put to death. Um, now this seems severe, but we have to understand that you know God wants the people to see that this is important. His worship is important. They need to rest. They need to follow His commands, and so they they have to understand that this is a big deal. And so they're, they're told that they're continuing to keep the Sabbath day to observe it throughout all generations as a covenant forever. Um, it's a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth. On the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And we, we worship on Sunday. The same can be true as a reminder to us of all that he has done. And then we're told in, in verse 18 that after God finished speaking to Moses, um, he took the two tablets that we remember with the Ten Commandments, uh, the tablets of stone written on with his finger here, and um, he gives them to Moses to give. Uh, to the people. Now, as we, we look at these uh, chapters, I think there's there's multiple things that kind of stick out um, that, that affect us here today. And I think the first of these is if you look at the altar of incense, um, we see the identification with, with incense and prayer as the as the, the aroma from the incense is rising up to God, we see in, in Scripture uh, the reference that our prayers uh, do the same. It's a good and pleasing thing for us to pray, just as um, it is prescribed for them to, to burn the incense day and night. Um, the same is true with us in prayer. God wants us to pray and to, to take time to do it. You know, how often do we get caught up... Um, in the hustle and bustle of life, and we don't pray. Uh, if, you, if you look at your life right now, uh, on a daily basis, uh, what does your prayer life look like? Are you taking the time to do it? Are you, you taking the time to actually uh, spend with the Lord, not just uh, heaping up empty phrases as the Bible says, but uh, not just you know kind of going through the routine, the motions, but actually spending time in prayer to the Lord? Um, you know, spending time confessing our sins, just talking to Him, uh, you know, praying for requests, but also thanking Him and glorifying Him in our prayers. Um, God wants us to do this. This is part of our life as Christians. And as we look at the incense here, you know, it reminds us that our prayers uh, are pleasing to Him. And so we need to be doing that. Um, if you're not praying as you should, how can you do a better job of it? Uh, how can you set aside certain times of day where uh, you can spend with the Lord? Um, it's a benefit to us, and, and, and it's a blessing to us. Um, so we need to make sure that we're taking the proper time in order to be doing that. Now, 
As we move on, uh, we look at the census here, and I think one of the big things that, that jumps out at the census, which I've already mentioned, is uh, ev everybody's got to pay um, the price. No one is exempt from it. And I think this shows us that the, no one has any privileged status before God. Uh, you know, we're all on equal footing. You know, no matter uh, whether we're well off in life or whether we're struggling to make ends meet, uh, we see an understanding that before the Lord, we're all on that same footing. We, we're all sinners in His sight. And because of that, all of us need the price to be paid. Uh, all of us need that same price to be paid. None of us uh, has a leg up. Uh, we're, we're all guilty of our sin. And because of that, that, that price that we find is found in Jesus. Uh, he pays the price for all who believe, no matter their status. And when we see this shekel that's been given, we need to understand that we too... Uh, have a price that needs to be paid for us, for our ransom. And that price can only be paid through Christ. And so we need to look to Him to pay the price where we uh, are unable to do it uh, ourselves. Because uh, then as you jump to the, to the basin, uh, we, we understand again that the priests, they needed to be cleansed because they're sinners. And we too need to be cleansed if we're going to approach uh, the Lord to be in His presence. Um, the only way for that to happen is through Christ. Um, this kind of reminds us, you know, the water in baptism. There's nothing magic in the water that saves us, but the, the water in baptism, uh, it's a sign for us that those that, that God has saved, those that have come to Christ, have been washed clean of their sins. Not because of any good works or things that we've done, but because of the work of Christ and the blood shed on the cross. And so as we even see this water here in the basin that the priest used, it reminds us uh, of our need of cleansing uh, through Jesus Christ. And then as we look at the, the oil and the incense and how they are to be made, um, I think that this, this sticks out for us because if you remember, they are to give the best of these things to the Lord for His worship. And they are to give it to no other. It's going to be strictly used for God. And um, if we, we look at our life and, and how we live, we need to be giving our best to the Lord and to Him alone. If, you, if you're honest with yourself and look at your life, um, many of us only give God what we have time for. Again, kind of going back to prayer a little bit, uh, we get so busy um, and we only give God a portion of our lives. Uh, sometimes this is because of our sin and we, we, we enjoy our sin too much and uh, we're, we're not going to give Him that part of our life. We're not going to give up our sin uh, for Him um, or uh, our time. I think our time's a big thing that we often uh, we hold near and dear, and we check the boxes on Sunday morning, um, maybe on Wednesday night, and uh, we give that allotted time to God. But uh, the rest of, of Sunday, the rest of the week, it's it's spent for us. And I'm not saying that you know don't go about your job, and uh, you know you've got things that you've got to, you've got to do. But the understanding here is that in all of our life. Uh, we need to be giving to the Lord. We need to be giving Him definitely the times of worship. But we also need to be giving Him our hearts uh, in all that we do, uh, in prayer, uh, in, in how we live, in, in our conduct. We need to be giving our best to the Lord every day of the week, every hour of the week, every minute of the week. Just as they give Him the best here uh, when it comes to the oil, when it comes to the incense, uh, we need to give God our best as well. And we don't need to give our best to anything else. It needs to be given to Him and to Him alone. We need to give up our sins. We need to give up our, our selfish practices and, and turn to giving all of ourselves to the Lord. And if we look at our life, I think we all struggle in different ways. And if you think about your life for a moment, uh, where do you struggle with that? And then how can you help? pray that the Lord will help you instead give everything, give all of who you are to Him? And from there we continue on into chapter 31 and as he set, set a holy eye and Bezalel to, to do his work and give them the ability this reminds us again that all of the abilities that we have in life come from the Lord they are all blessings they are all gifts from him and we need to be be careful not to to puff ourselves up to boast in our ability remember that all that we have uh, it comes from God maybe it might be uh, your ability to deal uh, in business um, it might be your ability to teach a um, in school, um, it might be your ability to your craftsmanship, handiwork, just like these these men here. Um, 
you know, whatever it may be, all the gifts and talents we've been given, we need to remember that it's not of our own doing. It's God who has blessed this, us with them, and we need to give him uh, the, cre- the credit where credit's due. Um, even in the church, um, in how we, we minister and how we love and how we grow, uh, all that happens here is not by our doing, but it's because the Lord has blessed us and be able to do that. And so as we look at, at, at all of our life, we need to see that all that we are able to do is a blessing from God, and we need to thank him uh, for that. Now, the last thing is, and we've mentioned this before, so I'm not going to hit on it very much, but I think it, it des- definitely needs repeating, is um, we need to be honoring the Sabbath as God has called us to do. And, and we live in a world where Sunday is just another day to kind of get all your stuff done before the week uh, starts. But, you know, the Sabbath is important to the Lord. We need to be taking time to actually rest in it. We need to be trying to, to get all of our other work done throughout the week or on Saturday, get all our errands out of the way, and we're actually taking time to spend with Him uh, on Sundays, to rest. Um, not just in church, uh, but we also need to be spending time in the Scriptures together as a family outside of church on Sunday. Um, it's a great time to sit and to, to go through the, the, the sermon or the Sunday school lesson at, at the lunch table, um, it's a good time to spend in the afternoon to, to read your, the Bible with your, your family, uh, to talk through it, to work through it. Uh, you know, we, we tend to let all the other day's activities slip into Sunday, but you know, God reminds us here that this day needs to be special. It needs to be set apart. Um, you know, we need to be, be doing good for, and loving our neighbor and eating at home. Uh, I know that's hard for many people, uh, but, you know, as we... If we go out to eat or we go shopping or things of that nature on Sunday, we're keeping all these other people from resting and worshiping God that they need to be doing as well. And so I would encourage you, you know, to, to look at how you view the Sabbath and see, you know, are you observing it properly? Are you resting in it? Are you, you growing in the Lord on it? And, and how we can do, all do a better job of that. Again, I know that's, that's not a popular thing today. But we really need to see what the scriptures say and how that informs us. We need to be into handling all that we do on Sunday and if we're worshiping and resting accordingly. Again, as we, we look at, at all this, there's so much here uh, that teaches us. And I'm thankful that we can be able to go through all of this together uh, to really see how these, these facts uh, of how, and these dimensions and all these different things, how they made and actually see how they, they speak to us here today in 2020. But I hope that's been encouraging to you as we walk through all this. uh, And I pray that uh, you're able to look through that and learn more yourself uh, in your own uh, time of personal study. That's it. And so let's let's close together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you again uh, for your word. Lord, even in the, the passages we might glance over, you have much to teach us. And so, Lord, from, from these verses here today, uh, or these different parts of the tabernacle, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just speak to us. Um, show us you know, why this is important for us here today. Uh, help us to grow in our love for you and our faith. And I pray that you would continue to guide us and keep us in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.